good to have everyone here. I, uh, I'm going to be the moderator in this room. I'm working with KTUA, so I work with uh, Mike and Jacob, who's been presenting uh, the uh, beginning of the workshop here. So I think maybe I'll hold on a little bit and see if uh, that everyone's arrived here. Um, looks like we have a good number of people here, so it's great. It's really good to see the presentation and um, all the good chat comments coming from everyone. So thank you for that and for um, for being here tonight. Um, yeah, looks like we have 27 of us in this room, so I think we can um, kind of get started to just uh, start sharing some thoughts. And you know, Jacob did a good job of kind of laying out the outline of this discussion. So we're kind of going to look at those different areas of the park improvements, and we can always um, go into some other areas too if you guys have other thoughts that are beyond those. So uh, we can start with the well-being and active improvements, uh, improvements, and um, you guys can feel free to just uh, visually raise your hand if you'd like, and or, or just um, unmute yourself if you, you can uh, bring up what you'd like to say about those. I can also uh, bring up the images that uh, Jacob did um, present as well, if that's helpful for anyone. Uh, Skipper, did you raise your hand? I thought I saw you uh, raise your hand. You I did. There? Perfect. I yeah, did. go ahead. I, I think um, everything sounds great that, uh, that Jacob showed, but um, I would love to see a community garden, uh, which might also fit in educational, but um, just, just throwing that out there. Uh-huh. Yeah, it's a great idea. Thanks for sharing that. Anyone else have any thoughts? Uh, um, yes, uh, my name is Antonio Blas. I'm a longtime resident of National City. Welcome to everybody. I'm glad everybody's participating. I was uh, here when uh, uh, Mayor George of Waters uh, tried to start the marina back then. I'm glad it happened uh, right. year 32. And one of my concerns would be parking. It's always been a mm -hmm. problem. And I hope you guys are thinking about it. I have owned boats since 1987. And I am not fighting for parking for the boats. That's OK. But a lot of times, people encroach into the parking for the boats. And when we have a trailer, it's very, very hard to go and look for parking even, even away from the area on the outside on the streets because it's not oh. easy to park a boat with the trailer. But and I understand that people that come to the park, especially when it's on Sunday or special events, special events like 4th of July or you know, uh, holidays like that, it's very, very hard to be combined. The parking for the park and the parking for the boaters. Yeah, OK. Thank you. I appreciate you bringing that up. Definitely, definitely a, a valid concern there. and. Um, yeah, I, I think um, Jacob and Mike both brought that stuff in the in the presentation. But just to reiterate, uh, the the boat parking will not be removed. It'll be it'll be retained in the in the any changes that are made. So that's definitely a priority to keep keep the parking that we have. But um, but I hear what you're saying that it, it seems that there maybe even is a need for some additional parking. Is what you're saying there? I I, I agree with Antonio. Um, my name is Joanne Fields from the. Um, API Initiative and Filipino Resource Center, um, especially when we have special events going on, parking is always the issue. Um, and I know that uh, emergency lane needs to be um, available. So if there is a redesign of the parking some way, somehow, if we can keep that in mind of the emergency um, lane, but also for um, our boaters, that um, how the, the trailers can come in and out. Um, I was just there this afternoon and someone um, couldn't get their boat out with their truck and someone, so it was two trucks pulling a boat in on the boat ramp. So I can just imagine if it was on a Sunday when it's more full there, there isn't much space to, to move around with the cars and the boats. So again, if there's uh -huh. some kind of redesign in the parking, um, if we can be mindful of that. Definitely, thank you for that comment. Appreciate that. Uh, can I add up one more thing? Just one more thing, please. Um, sure. The, the channel, as it comes to the end of the channel under freeway five, 
the bike lane lowers and drops almost to the low tide. And whenever the high tide goes up, uh, it cannot be used by the bikers because it's full of water. But uh. it's not a complaint about that. My idea, I have always had this idea, can, would it be possible to incorporate part of the channel as this redevelopment? Because if you were able to put locks at the end of the channel, you could contain water at the high tide and through the same access for the bikers have kayakers, canoes, pedal boarding to be using it when it's high tide by closing the locks and be part of the uh -huh. entire system of the park because people can walk, come around, drop their kayaks and enjoy while the water is contained on that portion of the channel and release it, uh, let's say certain hours when the high tide begins to go out, uh, close it, people will have to retrieve their toys and the water can be released. But for a few hours, even people who have paddle boards and kayaks will be able to use it. Yeah, I don't know that if makes it's a crazy sense. idea, but it's a clean yeah, water when it comes that. in and it's clean water when it goes out. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Yeah, that's a, that's a really interesting idea. Thank you for sharing that. Okay, thank you. Um, Tom, I see you have your uh, hand raised there. Would you like to say anything? Well, I think Antonio is on to something and that's exactly what I put in the chat earlier and uh, want to actually address it a little bit deeper. Um, you know, I, I have the hysterical background of remembering when the Sweetwater River was just a marsh and when 805 didn't exist, nor the uh, obviously the 52. Um, it seems to me like that is wasted real estate. And uh, as, as, as it was addressed uh, by Antonio, there could be some amazing connectivity between Pepper Park as a destination uh, and National City Chula Vista uh, coming uh, through that way and, and under, the, under the freeways and, and uh, uh, you know, you, literally, you, you have the potential of having a world-class rowing uh, venue there because of, uh, of the way it's situated and, and, and viewing corridors, uh, paddle boarding, unlimited. Uh, and it's just not, it, it, it's just not a, a utilized uh, piece of uh, 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 real estate. Uh -huh. I actually remember when that was the spoils for the uh, as they built 805 and that was literally a mountain uh where where what is now where the water is it was literally a, a mountain and it was connected uh to south bay yamaha and and, and literally off-roading and of course I, I do remember the off-roading long before the uh the marina was in that was definitely dune buggies and atvs uh, we, those days aren't coming back. I realize that, but there is opportunities within that water corridor that, that I believe should be looked at for connectivity. Okay. Great, great comment. Um, let me um, get to some of the other hand raises here. Uh, Sylvia, it looks like you have your hand up as well. Would you like to unmute yourself there? Oh, yes. Yeah. Sorry, I was trying to type also. <laughs> uh, oh, thank okay. you. Um, that okay um i just want to share that i love the idea of adding the community garden uh specifically as an educational perspective that's a big thing so i hope you can support that as well uh, because we do need also green spaces uh, more trees definitely would help not only um the feeling of being along with that but also in our air quality. We need to improve our air quality. And I know the port side of San Diego is very active in that. So that will be a great idea as well. Um, there are other things that <laughs> I'm very excited about, but uh, mm -hmm. one thing that uh, the community is requesting is fountains. Uh, mm -hmm. One good one that I've seen a beautiful image uh, would be musical lighted fountains. Mm -hmm. uh, that would be great for, any type of age from little ones to adult seniors um so that would be an awesome thing 
to include. Yeah. Great idea. More ideas, yeah, but you. I know there's more people that want to participate. So thank you. Thank you. Appreciate that. Uh, I'm going to go give it to you, Zach. I think you're the next one with the hand raised there. Thank you. I'm Zach. I'm a resident here in National City. Um, I do want to ask, uh, ask you if you can put, you know, whatever uh, break out, breakout room we're in, if you can put that image up so that way we're, we stay on that topic. But um, just wanted to uh, remind y'all and everyone here that uh, we got to remember that park should be designed around people. And also, have you made a, have you um, done a survey of actually how many boats are, are launched out of Pepper Park and, you know, do we need that many parking spots for the boats and, um, mm -hmm. and yeah, we just, that, that does concern me. We've got to have a healthy balance of making that park for people and pets or whatever it is more than, yeah. you know, and also have equal opportunity to have access to, to that boat launch as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's definitely a good point, balancing those users. And, and yeah, I think that would be a valuable study if it hasn't actually been performed. I'm actually not personally aware of whether that has been performed, but yeah, I think that's a great, great point, great thought. So thanks for sharing that. Also, um, this, this breakout room, um, all the breakout rooms are discussing each of those different topics. So it's any of them, they're all fair game right now, just so you know. And I can bring those images up if anyone would like. It's just going to kind of hide everyone's faces. So it's a little harder for me to track like whose hands are up or, you know, so that's kind of why I've been doing that. But, um, you know, I can definitely do that if that's what everyone wants to see. And Stephen, uh, this is Leslie with Port Staff. I'm also taking notes at what is what everybody's saying. So I think towards the end is when we were planning on having me screen share with that. So, um, you know, if people want to see that sooner, we could always do that as an option too. Oh, okay, great. Yeah, sorry, I should have introduced Leslie. Um, she's uh, with the Port of San Diego and <laughs> taking notes for us. So uh, thank you for doing that, Leslie. And yeah, um, go ahead and let me know when you want to, when you feel the right time is to share those. We could definitely do that. Um, yeah, I, I'm so, typing so, uh, live as we write, so um, I'll follow your lead, Stephen, if you want to see everyone's faces or um, uh -huh. have the words up on screen. You just let me know. Okay, all right. I think maybe we keep everyone's face up for now, and if anyone is really against that, just you know, feel free to unmute yourself and let me know. Um, and we'll keep going. Uh, I think we're having some pretty good discussion right now, so I see a lot of hands up. I want to try to get to some other folks. I couldn't um, even Jennifer. put my face up, so you don't know me because I cannot put my face up. I don't know how to do that. <laughs> oh, okay. I see your yeah, photo, well, so. <laughs> yeah, we see your photo. Yeah. You right there, <laughs> next to my girlfriend. Ex-girlfriend. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> Thanks. All right, Jennifer, I think uh, you had your hand up for quite a while. You want to speak next? Yeah, hi, everyone. My name is Jennifer. I'm a student from Sweetwater High School. And so I thought that keeping some of that grass area would be really nice. Um, mm -hmm. You know, it would complement like having picnics and, you know, like children running around and also like dancing and doing Zumba or really stretching. It could be really helpful. And also, I really like the kiosco idea. I think like it could be like a nice feature. I don't think I've seen one here like in National City. And mm -hmm. along with the community garden, you know, they could be like <laughs> near each other. And it's just mm -hmm. like it would really bring more life to the park. And mm -hmm. one more thing I wanted to say was like having the performance areas. I know my school, I'm in several clubs that and extracurriculars where we always perform and we're looking for a nice place and also <laughs> And having Pepper Park that's really close by would be really cool um, for like mm -hmm. middle schools and yeah also and having like artwork displayed around the park I think that would be really cool. Great thank you for that. Um, do you have any thoughts on the existing art out there or just curious? I de definitely think that we should add in more like oh and advocate for mental health I think it's really important and having some art that shows that like some reminders like remember to love yourself would be really nice mm -hmm. great thank you for the comment 
All right. Um, I think, uh, Randy, I think you were next there in the line. Yeah. Thanks, Stephen. Hey, everyone. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, my name is Randy, and uh, yeah, I'll go ahead and just share several different ideas that I have. Um, one of the, I love Pepper Park, but it's really isolated. You can see that easily by looking at the map. It's a lot of folks don't even know it's there. Um, yeah. it's extremely isolated, surrounded by a bunch of private property um, storage, cars, boats. Um, it's landlocked. Um, and I think building, um, ideally, this would be difficult to do, but I think we should, you know, think think big and think boldly is having um, either a pedestrian bike bridge directly from the Bayshore Bikeway that, that lands right on the Pepper Park, um, making it really accessible to get in and out of there, maybe using that little a jetty feature somehow that the pier has, Pier 32 has, you can kind of see the land leans over, kind of like a mm -hmm. finger kind of goes in there, but um, creating that experience for people to roll into and onto um, Pepper Park would be huge directly from the Bayshore Bikeway. Um, I think that uh, having activities for folks to get onto the water and into the water for those that don't own boats would be great. So I think having a little beach area would be amazing. I love the idea of the ferry down the road. I'm planning for that is going to be important. Um, I think that uh, uh, I love the kiosco idea of having like a place for music and bands to perform in like in the summertime and whenever like Imperial Beach does and other cities do. Um, I think that the, if you look at the map, there is a lot of, like I said, private property storage, parking lots. The whole, the whole thing is surrounded by giant parking lots of storage for boats and cars. So you know, maybe utilize promoting the parking that already exists on 32nd Street and Marina and um, honestly expanding the, the park beyond what's, what's currently being proposed in the previous presentation. I think we should mm -hmm. think about, about reclaiming more space for people in the area and, um, and South Bay's access to the Bay. You know, I think that that's a legacy that we rec need to recognize that we have been excluded from the Bay and that I think the park could be even bigger than originally proposed. And um, yeah, again, I think just highlighting to the Kumeyaay history in the area in relation to water would be. Mm -hmm. Great. Wow, good comments. Thank you, Randy, appreciate that. Um, all right, uh, I'm gonna keep moving here because we're getting close on time. So Andrea, you wanna go next? Oh, could you uh, unmute yourself real quick, Andrea? Thanks. There you go. Um, yeah, yeah, I live in Southeast and I guess I'll go into some of the issues. I do want to see some recognition or use uh, for indigenous uh, communities, Kumeyaay, Kukupa, other folks uh, mm -hmm. there. I think um, maybe as the prior speaker was commenting, um, what we notice in South Bay is a lot of um, lack of access to the Bay. To, we don't have beaches. We have a lot of industrial and working waterfront. So anything that can help just um, give us that little like patch of beach is great. Um, I do a yeah. lot of cycling on the Bayshore Bikeway and more connectivity as one other person mentioned, like having that connect the National City in Chula Vista, I think would add value to the community and bring people into the park or make them feel like they have access to the water. I do like the idea of the bike, uh, the boat tours and the ferries and how that could be an educational component. I've mm -hmm. often thought that, you know, a lot of that uh, conservation marsh area around there is fantastic, but maybe some built walking platforms or bike platforms to allow people to go through there would be great that wouldn't um, affect those areas in an adverse way, but that would be fantastic. And you know, the one thing I wanna say is that I don't wanna see is some of the uh, same things we've seen the port develop uh, in central San Diego, where a lot of the parking is paid, ACE parking contracts, or a lot of hotels mm -hmm. or restaurants or things that are just, you know, private businesses. I understand that that brings in rents for the port and it helps to pay for things. But what I would like mm -hmm. to see is just um, more along the lines of Chicano Park or these park um, areas that allow people to congregate in ways that are the most accessible, that are free, that don't aren't don't feel like um, a restaurant or a mall, or that you have to pay to access these spaces. Um, mm -hmm. 
and that where people can just bring their families because I do go down there a lot. I kayak down there. I ride bikes down there and I see people bringing their families just to ride bikes around and I'd like to preserve that element to it. Yeah, definitely. Great comments. Thank you. Yeah, great, great. Um, Alex, I think you're next there. You want to jump in? Yeah, hi. Um, so I've uh, pretty much lived in National City all my life. And, uh, you know, uh, I, I see the, uh, the great ideas that you guys have here. Uh, it's just, you know, last time I checked, the, the, the park is really small. And uh, even people that I knew, uh, you know, living in, uh, in San Isidro area, they did not know this park exists. So one is it's a, it's a nice way to shed some light into this park for more people in our community, not just the people in National City, uh, but, you know, people in Chula Vista and, and anybody up north as well. Um, but the problem is with access, you know, it, the one is the, the, the limited amount of space and how are you going to put all, how are you going to cram all these, uh, these ideas uh, into this uh, tiny park? Um, and the other part is, you know, and at the same time, if you're drawing in more people, you're going to draw in more people that are going to be driving. And there's a lot of people that are, you know, um, um, uh, uh, car enthusiasts or just everybody's driving nowadays, but how, how are we going to switch that culture as well as a, appeal to the people that, you know, they need to drop their, their things off uh, at the park or whatever the case may be, you know? Um, and one example, I believe when we had the uh, beer garden uh, a couple of years ago, uh, and they did an amazing job, right? I, I didn't I didn't realize how much space uh, the city utilized to have every vendor out there and um, and to you know get to know the uh, businesses that are around San Diego, around uh, San Diego. And the strategy that we uh, played a role was we just took an Uber, right? And you're seeing that in downtown where they're blocking certain streets or there or there's dedicated Uber drop-offs and lifts. Like we're we kind of also have to realize that we have to be inclusive with all types of transportation so how do we make a, a convenient for people that can bike a couple minutes because they parked it at a designated area away from the park or how do we have wow. areas where we can um, a suitable location for these ride sharing uh, businesses right because we have to have that balance of opening up to the community but as as well as making it uh, business friendly um mm -hmm. you know how, how can we have designated spots for uh, you know, uh, vendors uh, coming in where we can imagine where there's different food vendors, different beer vendors, whatever the case may be, but also uh, be inclusive with all th those different types of transportation. Uh, I think that mm -hmm. for me is my, my biggest concern is not just to back up with all these great ideas, but also how to, how to make it convenient and accessible for, for the people to, ha to how to get there with its limitations. Do we need to expand on this park? you know, to have all these great ideas. That's a great point and good comments. Um, we are actually expanding the park or if, if you, um, in the presentation, they, they mentioned this too, but there is gonna be a certain amount of area that's added to the park. Um, you're right, it is um, a pretty small park as it is, but um, with those added areas, we get um, potential for some other things to bring into the park. So that's kind of where we're looking at these new things, but um, those are great points though. And there definitely will be space limitations where we, can't get everything we want into the park, but also great yeah. points about um, creating a drop-off space or maybe space for food trucks. It's not like you're kind of bringing up that kind of a thought. Um, so great points and good comments. Thank you for sharing. Thank those. you. Yeah. All right, uh, Anna, I think you're uh, next there. Okay, this is me. Um, yep. I don't know how many Anna's there, here. but. <laughs> oh, no, uh, thank you. Uh, I just want to like to share to like um, you know um, as a Kumiai person, you know, I would love to see more uh, Kumiai education there because a lot of people they didn't even know that Kumiai was still here. You know, they talk like all oh, the people from the past, but you know, we're still here. So um, I would love to see like a Kumiai name to honor our people. You know, to name it a Kumiai name. And also, I really like what somebody was saying about to have, like, amphitheaters and stuff like that so everyone can share their own culture because it's important. You know, we're all together, so everyone is it's important to everyone can share their own culture so we can uh, know each other, you know, to, have, to be united. You know, all the culture, I think that's a beautiful thing to be having, like, a multicultural event 
so we can know each other. Thank yeah, you. absolutely. Great. Thank you for sharing that. Um, uh, Leslie, I was seeing, um, I think Carlos sent me a message that there's three minutes remaining. So um, I don't know if maybe this might be a good time to share the notes we have so far on the screen. And then we can, um, and then if anyone else wants to uh, add any thoughts to that, uh, that would be great. Are you able to? Oh, okay. Perfect. So, um, and sorry, Leslie I was trying to bring... unmute, unmute and multitask. Um, always oh, challenge, yeah. right? <laughs> so um, I'm hoping people can see, I can enlarge also. Um, and I just, sorry, Stephen, just started to keep up with everyone, just listed them all under this first topic, even though I know it crosses over all of the different topics. So um, I can uh -huh. kind of leave these up. We can let people scroll through. Um, we could read them, however you like to make sure we facilitate. Um, how you'd like to move forward and making sure everyone's thoughts were captured. Yeah, definitely. I mean, I think this is um, this is mainly just so you can all see we're paying attention here. We you're you're being heard, and we're definitely documenting everything you're saying, and we're gonna take that into consideration in the planning of the park. Um, I think this is a good time um, for those who haven't spoken. If you see that uh, maybe you've kind of seen the, most of the comments here. If you have any other thoughts outside of these, if you have anything to add, um, now's the time. And there is a page two I could scroll down after we give people a little bit of time here too. So, uh -huh. and I apologize for spelling errors. Oh, <laughs> no worries. This is a very difficult juggling all the screens. So, <laughs> yeah. I just had a question if you, if y'all were reading um, the chat too, a lot of folks have been putting ideas into the chat. We will make sure we yeah. capture those and right incorporate them all, Stephen. I wasn't able to read those while typing and, and double capture, um, but I uh -huh. I do know we're looking at those too. So yes, definitely. Yeah, that's a good question. I think um, I think Carlos may be um, capturing all of those, but I, I think we're we're making sure to grab those. And yeah, we're we're happy to see all those comments. It's great discussion. So. I have a question. Yep. Mm -hmm. Sorry, I'm, I think you might be frozen, um, Ada. Can you guys hear me? A summer of National City. In regards to the sentiment that we got. I don't know. Can you hear me? Hello, hello. Yeah, I can hear you. Yeah, I think it might be a little lag, but I can hear you. Oh, sorry about that. So, in regards to the comment that was just shared about uh, more education on the Kumeyaay and other um, tribes in the area, are we totally um, not able to change the name of the actual park? Like, why is it called Pepper Park, for example? Is there a way that we can change the name to make it more inclusive to communities um, in the South Bay? Is there any way that we can connect that to a more culturally relevant or appropriate name? Um, I was kind of thinking about that out loud. I don't know if that was allowed or not. What was the suggestion? Yeah. And go ahead, Stephen, and then I'll um, yeah respond if you if you'd like. Oh, um, you know what? Go ahead, Leslie. Actually, I don't actually know the answer to that question. So <laughs> I did it. capture <laughs> that idea. Um, there is absolutely opportunity to consider the names of parks. Um, so mm -hmm. I think it's a, it's a good idea. We'll include it here. Then ultimately, when we you know, advance a, a design and take something to our board that could be definitely one of the things we recommend. So great, I love it. Thank you. Does anybody knows why it's called Pepper Park to begin with? I'm sorry, I'm not aware of that history. Um, but I'm sure. I saw on social media they said it was named after um, a family member. It, it, so it, it, it's some. Um, maybe somebody prominent back in the day, but I, I saw that somewhere that's on social why. media. I think that's uh, right. Really quick, I gotta interrupt here. We're gonna be, the breakout room will be closing in two seconds here.